Hmm, it looks like Gracie's got everything set out. Yep, it looks tasty. And it's what we've been craving for a while. We don't eat it often. But when we do, we like to make it flavorful. Woo, look at those onions. Ooh, nice, sweet, white onions with brightness and flavor too. Yeah, my little Gracie, Princess of the House, she's got everything set out. Yeah, she'll be wanting one of them pranks. And I'll bet she will. It'll sort of be like paying her for getting everything out. Oh, well, hello there, friends and family. So good to see you again back in the country kitchen for this episode of Mr. Tom's Neighborhood. And as you see, Gracie's got everything laid out. So we can start cooking up a meal for tonight's supper time. And it ain't much but it's gonna you know satisfy a craving we've had quite some time we don't eat it often but when we do we like to make it flavorful so let me go through the ingredients and let me show you just how to prepare it to make the most flavorful thing you ever had when you cook up your hot dog the next time you have that craving too so yeah of course we're gonna have to have some franks and what we have right here is the classic Franks made with chicken and pork added from Bar S. And there's four left. And to give it a little bit of spice, we're going to be using some onion. And this is a nice bright white onion. Ooh, that'll really liven up the flavor too. And over here, as you can see, we got a few things. Oh yeah. We're going to add some more flavor with this Herbox beef bouillon cubes. Yes, we will. But another one of the ingredients that's going to make this so fine is the Silver Floss Bavarian Kraut, naturally fermented, mildly sweet with caraway seed. And to add other levels of flavor, we're going to be having some thyme leaves. Yes, we will. And some celery seed to give it that celery goodness and of course salt and pepper to taste and it don't take long and I've cooked hot dogs every way you can imagine I've boiled them I've steamed them I've fried them you know split them fry them up I've grilled them and I've even microwaved them it all depends on my mood but if I had to guess, just like all of you who answered the poll over on the community page, boiling and grilling is probably my two favorite ways. But today, we're going to be doing a little bit of boiling, or maybe you might call it sautéing, or poaching, who knows. So, with all that said, let's get this kitchen show on the road. Now the first thing we got to do is we got to dice up some onion. Oh yeah. And you know, I don't get fancy about this. You know, I try to, you know, make nice thin slices. You know, because it's a dice. Like I say, this is a half of a white onion. You can use yellow. You can use red if you want to for that milder taste. I'm going to go with white because it makes it so bright. Yep. I'm just dice her on up here. Nothing fancy with how we're slicing this up. Take your time. You know, I can always speed this up and y'all won't know it. It'll look like I'm a pro. But I'm not. And I don't want to cut my fingers off. So we have that. But we're just going to give it a nice dice right there. Because I like plenty of onion. When I'm eating a hot dog. And there we have it. Didn't take long. Got a little bitty bowl right here. So now we'll just slide it on in there. At least that's what we'll try if we don't make a mess. Because this is real life here. There's no take two on any of Mr. Tom's cooking videos. So there we have it. 
Again, we sanitized the counter before we started. You're probably thinking, well, good, good thing you did that. Because <laughs> we tend to get it all over. So, the onion's all done. And that's all we need. And we still got half left. So now, we got everything we need. Slide over to the stove and start putting this mind-blowing hot dog dish together. So we got a brand new pan that a viewer sent me, which happens to be a lovely family member too. And they were worried that the pans I had, they weren't fine enough to keep cooking on. Yeah, and they were rather old. So we got this nice granite one. We want to really thank them and give them a hug and love them a lot. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our crap right here. The whole entire can. Yep. It'll seem like a lot, but it'll be okay. Woo. This here crap from Silver Floss with the caraway seed naturally fermented. It's got a nice Sweet sour profile. If you never had it, ooh, I you know sometimes I just got to get a big bite and try it out. Mm mm mm. That's good. All on some. Awesome. Gonna click on our bur burner here. It'll cooperate, and we're gonna set it at medium low right now. Next we're going to add in some thyme leaves. About a half a teaspoon. Just distribute it all around your sauerkraut. And to give it a little bit more flavor and zest, quarter teaspoon of celery seed. Yeah, that's going to do it. Next, some pepper. And this is where you just pepper to taste. If I had to guess, it's about an eighth to a quarter teaspoon. And you gotta have some salt. You know, it's a flavor enhancer. Yeah, about an eighth of a teaspoon will do. Now, now we ain't gonna use all those on y'all. Because we cut up a half. We're just going to put us in. Oh, there's a tablespoon. There's another tablespoon. Well, let's go with four tablespoons. Reason being, that'll leave us enough to use as toppings. Because I just love onion. Next, we're going to add in our classic bar s beef franks right here i'm going to nestle them on in there oh yeah get them nestled on in there and as this cooks up we'll nestle them some more so we got four of them and there's a little bitty pan two for now and two for later because this heats up really well and if you know anything about flavor enhancement you'll know the two later will be even better than the two before now that we got those classic franks sauerkraut and onions all seasoned well we're going to add us in a little bit of this beef stock made from a bouillon cube Ooh yeah this is what's going to make it fine Trust me that. Now you can use carton B stock. You can use chicken stock if you want to. It'll be all fine. Now, we just have to wait for the magic to happen. And let that come up to simmer. And then we'll put the lid on. Now you're going to want to try to nestle these on in to all that goodness. 
you know, get them on in there. Sink them on in. It'll be okay. Don't touch this brand new pan with this fork. We're just using it, you know. And we're just even going to put some of that kraut on top. Just like that, and the onions. Woo, look at that. So they're just surrounded in flavor. Sink them right on in there. There you go. And they're starting to come up to a simmer, as you can see. Now you might be thinking, well, I just boil my dogs. Well, then all you got for flavor is the dogs and water. Or if you steam them, it's the same. Now frying them, you get a little bit of that browning. Or maybe you're one of those that likes some blacking. I don't. Processed meat's bad enough for you without causing you more harm by turning them into carcinic charcoal. And then, of course, there's the microwave, which I've done too. We're just going to put them on in there and start to let them simmer down. Y'all keep an eye on them. Now, I've been letting these simmer with the lid on for about 10 minutes to infuse all that flavor under a little bit of pressure. Because when you put a lid on, even though it's got a vent, you're still going to add some pressure to your cooking. See that steam build up on that glass? Yeah, so not only is it simmering, it's steaming, and it's adding pressure to infuse that flavor in those dogs. But now, for the last 15 minutes of cooking, I'm going to take that lid off to allow some of that beef stock to reduce down. Yes, I am. And that will concentrate the flavors. Yeah, this is all that kind of stuff they teach you in culinary school, believe it or not. So we're just going to let this simmer away. It's now on a three on my stove, which is, you know, sort of kind of medium, medium. Not really medium low. And not really medium sort of in between but you just want little bubbles forming and you want to see that steam coming off to reduce you know the beef stock and give it a little more flavor and enhance the dogs and the sauerkraut well we've allowed them to simmer with the lid off for about 15 more minutes to reduce that beef bouillon which beef stock and water yeah so now we got to start fixing them up because they're good enough for me and I'm starving to death. So we're going to turn the heat off. And we're going to bring them on over and start putting them in some buns. Now, as you can see, we got a couple of just store brand hot dog buns. And we're going to snake out one of those fine hot dogs right there. Woo! We're going to sit her down in that bun. I think we got another one right here. Ooh, they're nice and plumped up. Just starting to split. Just like we like them. Right there. Now, to make them all the more better, hey, you gotta have some dill pickle slices. Right here. Just gonna put a few of them on top. Oh, yeah. That's going to make it all the more better. That pickle juice. Woo! Talking mighty fine here. Just get them on down in there. Let them rest on top. Mm -mm -mm. But we're not through yet. Because I love my onion, I'm going to bring out a little bit of that half an onion I still had left. 
we're gonna sprinkle some of that in there too Ooh yeah can't have enough on y'all you're asking me now what goes best with hot dogs you know it mustard give it a little bit of shake up put her down right in here give it a little bit just like that and now over the crowd let's let it drain in our slotted spoon and we're gonna put it right on top oh look at that steamy crowd smack it on down put some more on this one right there and there you go but we're not done yet Mm -mm -mm. you can't have too much mustard on these kraut dogs and there you have it best darn kraut dogs you'll ever have in your life right there now once they cool off a tad the only thing we got left to do you know it we got to have a taste test don't we well the only thing we got left to do is give them a taste test as you know, I always do. And of course, I cheated and already had one. And we're going to try not to make a mess. Though it's heaped on up. And that's going to be hard to do. Let's give them a taste test real quick. Mm-mm-mm. My oh that burst of flavor mm. I must look atrocious and all mess from that mustard but those got flavor that'll slap you on down yeah you got a touch of sweetness and of course that sour factor from the silver floss sauerkraut you get that little bit of bite from that black pepper and a little you can tell there's a little touch of thyme and the celery seed mellows it all out and of course that mustard who puts the tang on in it yes it does those are mighty fine if I say so myself so hey the next time you're craving for you know something similar to a New York style hot dog because I know my family up in New York eats hot dogs with sauerkraut and my ones in PA do too and when I'm having a craving I do as well as you can see because sauerkraut is so good for you so hey until I Gracie, which is taking a nap. And the kid crew, see y'all on that next episode of Mr. Tom's Neighborhood. Y'all take care. Stay safe out there. May God bless you all. As you bless those in your lives. You know we love you. For all that you do to make our lives better here. Goodbye for now. Ooh, I just got to finish these off. It's been a long day. And I'm tired. And it's getting late. And I still got to clean up. No. <laughs> Talking to myself again. Later, all. <laughs>